not great. Hey friends, Dr. Abdullah Said here. Before I go on, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the little bell so you never miss our content. And hey, word of mouth, even in this internet age, still goes a long way. So, um, I have to be honest with you. I love sugary cereals. Like, the sweeter the better. Give me some Cocoa Puffs. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, otherwise known as CTC in my household. Or those delectable Reese's Puffs. Delicious. Now listen, when I enjoy them, I enjoy them as dessert because, well, listen, one serving of any of those cereals has three extra teaspoons of sugar. That's an extra teaspoon of sugar per quarter cup. Now, if you don't know how big a quarter cup is, think three tablespoons. Yeah, that's not that much cereal. But here's the thing about it. I want you to think back to any of those cereal commercials you've ever watched. You know that line they always use? Part of a balanced breakfast. <laughs> nah, not really, unless you really want to get diabetes. But here's the thing. There was a time for me and probably for you when I used to eat that for breakfast. Now, it wasn't an everyday thing. My mom made sure of it. But when I was a kid growing up, Saturday mornings meant two things, cartoon and sugary cereal. And I loved both of them. But you can imagine it was like this self-contained, self-reinforcing cycle. I would eat the sugary cereal, I would watch the cartoons for the sugary cereal, and eat more of the sugary cereal, and watch more of the cartoons, and you get where I'm going here. It turns out that the experience of eating that cereal isn't just the taste of the cereal, don't get me wrong, that's delicious. But also, it's the way that it creates a whole feeling about it. To me, when I think about a lot of the cereals that I used to eat when I was a kid, there's a certain kind of childhood nostalgia, and they did it on purpose. See, when I was a kid, I probably was eating Cocoa Puffs. And you know what? I was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You know why? Because of Sonny. Sonny, the character who goes, you know, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Watching Sonny, eating the Cocoa Puffs, watching Sonny. All it did for me, well, is it reinforced that feeling. One of the big draws that these cereal companies know they have is the advertising campaigns that they literally use to inflict that feeling into our minds to tie us to a certain broader feeling than just eating a sugary cereal, but being a part of something, having fun with the whole thing. Now you might be asking, Abdul, what's the problem? Look, it's just a bowl of cereal. Yeah, it's just a bowl of cereal, or it's a bowl of cereal with three teaspoons of sugar every single morning of your childhood because you've been told that it's part of a balanced breakfast. And that there, well, it contributes to the fact that childhood diabetes is as high as it has ever been. And so to do something about that, well, the government of Mexico decided that they were going to step up. They passed a law forcing food manufacturers who manufacture foods with excess sugars or fats to actually put warning labels on their boxes. And guess what kind of food had to have a warning label? Yeah, you guessed it. Part of this balanced breakfast. And on top of all of that, they forced any food that had a warning label on it to forego using their mascots on their boxes. And the cereal manufacturers... Let's just say they went cuckoo. All right, I wanna explain more about what they did after this message from our sponsors, the Marguerite Casey Foundation. Embrace the power of freedom with a message from the incredible 2023 Marguerite Casey Foundation Freedom Scholar, Professor Charmaine Chua. Charmaine's wisdom is crystal clear. Freedom is a democratic enterprise and it's up to us to shape it. We can't sit back and wait for others to shift the balance of power. We've got to do it ourselves. MCF Freedom Scholars are at the forefront of academia, offering critical insights for social justice and sparking groundbreaking ideas to transform our democracy, economy, and society. Join us in the journey of change and discover more about Charmaine and the entire 2023 Freedom Scholars. Visit them at caseygrants.org or connect with them on social media at Casey Grants. So the industry went nuts. Yeah, in particular, Kellogg's. You know, makers of Frosted Flakes, they're great. Or Fruit Loops with Toucan Sam. Yeah, so they're, they're not Toucan Sam or Tony the Tiger. They're Sam el Tucan and el Tigre Tonio. Well, it turns out that they could not be on their boxes any longer because, of course, their cereals, they had to have warning labels on them because they have so much sugar in those cereals. Probably not something we should be eating as part of our balanced breakfast. But the industry went crazy. Not only did they take this battle to the legislatures, to the courts, to try and get this law overturned, but they actually went as far as to change the ingredients in their cereals. Yeah, that's right. They started putting allulose in cereal, which is an artificial sweetener. But I want you to think about just how much planning this takes. In Mexico, if your product contains artificial sweeteners, you have to label that too. But there's one sweetener that wasn't included. And guess which one it was? Allulose. So they were able to put allulose in their product instead of sugar. Now, allulose works in a very interesting way in the gut. 
It's an interesting molecule, like all artificial sweeteners. These are molecules that will bind to our taste receptors to tell us that we're tasting something sweet. Interestingly, the reason that these sweeteners don't just taste like sugar, they're actually even more saccharine than sugar, is because they bind with what we call a lot more avidity. They bind more strongly to those taste receptors. But in the rest of our guts, our guts don't recognize them as sugar. So instead of being picked up in the small intestine and then going into our blood and getting stored in our muscles and liver like sugar might, no, they just go right through our gut and uh, end up exiting. Now, here's the interesting thing about it. In our gut, particularly our large intestines, it's very sensitive to how much stuff you have in there. If you remember anything from your high school chemistry, membranes act to balance the amount of water and other stuff on either side of a membrane. And that's basically what a large intestine is. So if you have a lot of molecules that aren't usually there, like let's say allulose molecules, what do you think happens? A whole bunch of water rushes into your large intestine, causing what we generally call diarrhea. So you can imagine there's a bunch of kids in Mexico eating their cereal, thinking that they're just having run-of-the-mill frosted flakes or Fruit Loops, and then have a terrible day the rest of the day, largely on a toilet. Yeah, that really sucks. And if you wanna understand just how bad artificial sweeteners can be, go ahead and go to Amazon and take a look at the reviews for artificially sweetened gummy bears. I'll just leave you there. But all that is to say that these cereal companies literally changed the ingredients in their cereal so that they can continue to market them using their all important mascots, which says a lot about that complex between the experience of eating cereal and the experience of being marketed to eat cereal. It's a really important part of things. And that's probably why these manufacturers went nuts when they weren't allowed to market their products with their mascots any longer. Now, all of this is to say, that's interesting, Abdul, why do I care? Chances are you're probably living in the United States. Well, you should care about whether or not Mexican kids are more likely to eat foods that may cause diabetes. Yeah, you should care about that. But you should also care because, well, the FDA is considering a similar approach. Now, they're not looking at taking mascots off of boxes, but they are looking at putting warning labels on foods with excess sugars or fats. And this war over El Tigre Tonio could tell us a lot about what that war could look like in a much bigger market here in the United States. Now, I learned a lot about this reading a piece by Nick Florco in Stat News. I highly recommend it. And I got to sit down with Nick on my podcast, America Dissected. I hope you'll check it out. Until then, y'all, stay away from allulose and maybe easy on some of those sugar-sweetened cereals, especially for your kids.